Hello everyone, I am Luis with Luis Flores Photography. Today we are doing the very first of a set of uh, tutorials. Um, this one will be about recoloring black and white photos and when we're working with uh, a beautiful photo of Miss Billie Holiday taken from Library of Congress. The photographer is William Gottlieb, excuse me if I said that completely incorrectly. Um, we're gonna focus on how to get a very realistic skin tone because a lot of the times when you work with a recolorizing photo, you're gonna get a very like a like a flat feel because there's no dimension put into the skin. So we're gonna focus on that. And the very first thing we're gonna do is let's just make a duplicate of the background layer just to make sure we're not going to do anything to it um, and we'll focus on the skin and then the rest we'll just kind of fill in. We're going to add a new adjustment layer, hue saturation and uh, for the hue that you want for the base for the skin I found that a pretty good place to start for the hue is like 18, 20, 22 that that area um, oh sorry excuse me you got to press colorize first then you're gonna hit 18 for the hue uh, let's do like anywhere between 35 and 40 um, let's just do somewhere in the middle and that's usually a good place to start for the skin uh, that if you do it this way uh, you'll be able to see uh, just kind of a general idea of what the color will be uh, press this area here and just invert it using control I inverting it turns it all black which means it's go it's gonna go away uh, and then what you're gonna do zoom in you know just wherever you feel comfortable switch to your brush and oh, make sure that you're at opacity 100 and you can see that you're gonna start painting in color um, so this is gonna take a while and we will uh, See you when we finish up doing the skin. One moment. Okay, so that is the base skin color. Um, and what the first thing I want to tell you guys about a realistic colorization is you're going to like just notice the difference in the face uh, that's really well lit and areas like the sha like the shadows that it's uh, not as well lit. The color looks very different, even though it's the same hue layer. That's because uh, Photoshop doesn't take into account how natural light actually hits it. I mean, it's just, it naturally will hit, uh, will look different in the shadows. So to make it look less, uh, well, to make it look more realistic, uh, what you can do is take away some of the color. Uh, the way you do that is um, by getting a, make your brush like a nice large size. Uh, making sure that it's at 0% hardness and uh, take the opacity and take it down to about 15%. Uh, anywhere around there is fine. 
Um, and what you're going to do is the areas that are in shadow, just do a quick pass. Whoa, excuse me. Take a quick pass. The hands are not as lit as the face, so we're going to do a quick pass. Same thing right behind the neck here. See how that looks so saturated? That'll go away once you do a quick run like that. Go to the hair. All right, that's the base. The next thing you want to do is uh, you're going to want to add a little bit of dimension to the skin. So if you look at uh, any picture of any person, you're going to notice that the skin isn't just one color. There's going to be areas where the capillaries are a little bit more pronounced. So there's areas where it's shaded red. There's areas that it's shaded yellow. There's always going to be some kind of a color cast on someone's skin and it's going to change depending on the location. So we're going to do a completely different uh, hue layer for each of those things. Um, so we're going to again do a uh, new adjustment layer and hue saturation. Um, let's do the like the redder magenta colors that way it'll um, that way it'll uh, it'll be a bigger difference that way. So um, I like to do like 10 for the hue. Again, again, make sure it says colorize. It'll be a completely different thing. 10 for the hue, um, for the saturation. Um, you know what? Mm, do something about 40. And for the lightness, let's actually let's leave that at zero as well. So again, that is just a little bit of a reddish tone and we're going to invert the, the layer again just to take that away and we can paint it in. The places where you're going to want to put the um, where you're going to want to put the the reds are kind of like near the near the cheeks and a little bit closer into the shadows because that's where it's going to look more pronounced where it's, it will naturally be more pronounced. So take the the opacity to like about a 18 to 20 just so you can kind of see what you're doing. See how I just added a very thin layer of red? And just to show you, look, that, that's what 100% uh, would look like. You don't want to do that. Um, so we are going to do, again, about a 20, something like that. And just go near the edges of the shadows, the neck, chest. Maybe, do you know what? It, oh, let's go bring it back down. Let's take away a little bit of that, what we added to the chin. That's a little bit too much. All right, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is the yellows. So we are going to do um, the, another adjustment layer. For the yellows. Colorize. Uh, let's do something a little warm but still in the yellow. So like 30, 30, 33. That works. The yellow is going to be closer to the highlights. You don't need to do too much of the yellow. All right. 
So just kind of get a good look at the overall skin. You you know you just make uh, whatever changes you feel you need to make. Like right now, I can tell that uh, in the uh, the base skin layer, I kind of overdid it here in the arm. So we're going to take away uh, some of that there. Uh, it's a balance. Kind of find out where it looks like it should be about correct. All right, and I kind of uh, think it, it is really helpful to label your layers, obviously. Um, so let's I. It, it's actually a better idea to name them at like as you create them. So let's pretend like I named them as I created them. So for the base, just you know, base. Uh, this one's gonna be for like for the the reds. This one's gonna be yellow. Okay. So what I like to do is just keep the skin in one general area so you can um, go back to it if you need to. So let's just uh, do group the layers. And let's just label that skin. So now you can kind of control that. Uh, the next thing that we should probably work on um, is the areas that are, again, just kind of closest to, to her again. So let's work on like the makeup, the eyes, earring, hair. Um, yeah, and then we'll work, then we'll move on to the dress and then we'll move on to the background. So we're gonna do uh, new adjustment layer, hue saturation, and let's do the lips. And so let's label that guy lips. Uh, and that's probably you know uh, up to you what color you want to do for the lips, um, but uh, probably something that's going to be close to a natural, uh, a nude color. And obviously, once you paint it in you can change it. And that doesn't look quite right. So let's go back and decide what color we want to make the lips. That's nice. Yeah, that's good there. All right, the hair. The hair is black, but whenever you have something that's black, you don't want to necessarily leave it black because it's always gonna have undertones. Um, so let's do, uh, uh, excuse me, hold on, let's go back to the layers. Let's name this guy hair. And we're just going to do a really light, uh, thing of brown, just like a little bit of a shade of brown there. Take your opacity down to about 20. Just color in very carefully and lightly. One of the biggest mistakes you can make when you're colorizing a photo is to leave areas that are supposed to be black that you leave it without any color whatsoever. The problem with that is it's just gonna stand out like a sore thumb. It's gonna be really obvious that um, it's a black and white photo. Next, I'm going to go in and do the background and this is going to be um, a very long process and I will not have you guys sit through that entire thing. Uh, I will see you back soon. All right, guys, this is what I'm going to leave as the final product for this one. Uh, notice I just went and I applied the same concept uh, to the background layers. Um, the curtains I have like I have two different color sets for that. Um, I separated the wood up top. Uh, and uh, you'll see that I just kind of filled in a little bit of the color up here. Um, 
also one important thing that I did in this, uh, at the very top layer, um, I did one color balance layer, which I'm just gonna label color cast. Um, that color cast layer is basically just one uh, overall light that will uh, kind of unify the lighting all throughout. That will always give it a more natural look. Uh, you can see the difference between these two. Uh, it's just It just kind of pulls it into reality just a little bit more. Um, and if I were to uh, give you guys one last note, I would say pay attention to the details. This one we, sk we skipped over a few details, um, but for instance, like on the microphone, brassing out the uh, some of the hardware really makes it pop. All right, thanks guys for tuning in. And if you have any questions, um, message me directly or comment on the video and I will try to answer questions. Also, I will do more detailed uh, instructions moving forward. What you feel I glossed over or if I missed something entirely, just let me know and I will try to do a follow-up video with uh, uh, more answers. Thanks guys. See you next time.